Hey guys, this is Versus Z bringing you a video review of Deluxe Class Drift from Hasbro's Transformers Generations toy line. This figure was released in the summer of 2010 and retails between 10 to 13 US dollars depending on where you go to buy him. Autobot Drift didn't always start off as an Autobot. He actually started off his early days as a brutal Decepticon known as Deadlock. He looked exactly the same except he had a much darker color scheme and instead of having swords, he had guns. Basically, his eyes were shown to the light, and he changed his ways and became Drift. If you want to see Drift in the comic books, you should check out IDW's comic series, All Hail Megatron. Drift's alt mode, according to TF Wiki, is supposed to be a breed between a Nissan Silvia S15 and a Mitsubishi FTO. I kind of see it, kind of don't. I mean, from this profile, I do see the FTO, especially in the taillight section, or the rear section. And the FTO does tend to have a high profile spoiler. I'm not really feeling this at all. Um, but from the front, it looks like more of an, I don't know, sort of S2000-ish? I, I don't know, but it's unfortunate Hasbro couldn't get licensing for the actual Sylvia S15, which which is the actual form that Drift takes in the comics. Um, but it, it, lo it looks pretty cool, I guess, for something that they had to mash together and mix up just so they so just so they don't wouldn't have to interfere with any licensing issues but anyway it's a nice white with this nice bright red and with the kanji on the side which set which translates into samurai the original concept which has the which is from the Sylvia S15 the kanji there would say uh, katana I really wish they could get a figure where it's more accurate to the comics but we're gonna have to settle with this one but anyway you do get some clear blue plastic for the windows unfortunately it is just painted plastic here uh, you do get these nice rims, uh, sort of, and the tires are painted in gray, as with the rest of anything on the body of Drift. Now, on the under profile, it's pretty obvious you do get a sword under there. That's one of the, I guess, knocks against the figure, is that it's just a huge sword right under there. But um, I guess if you're playing around with it, you don't see it at all. And really, would you really flip the figure under there? Another bit of kibble that you can see, robot kibble, is the obvious hands and if the sword isn't in the way Drift's head is just right there so I mean it's okay it doesn't really show I usually don't store the sword under there anyway but uh, even if I did I would store it this way because the scab or not the scabbard but the hilt sticking out this way kinda resembles a third exhaust pipe which is kinda cool because it kinda resembles the three exhaust pipes that are on the new Lexus LFA which this car actually kind of kind of looks like um, now the sword you notice that they're paint they're um, filled in with blue the sword doesn't come that way uh, only one side I've done with blue the other side is bare and also right here on this trim I've also done in red so you're not gonna get the sword looking like that okay, let's start this transformation you want to remove the sword first and the sword is made of this soft rubbery plastic and this is an issue and I'll bring it up later on but the transformation is actually relatively easy you just t open up the doors first of all to kind of loosen everything else and the transformation is actually you know quite easy but the parts are stuck in there very securely so that's good you can do this open up the doors and one thing I want to point out here is that these clear not clear panels but these uh, these panels here are nice it's where his other swords are stored but I like this added touch because it resembles the inner workings of a door uh, under all the plastic panels and all that I've actually um, in, in in the world of drifting, you need to have your car as light as possible, and that does re that does require to that does require you to remove extra seats in the back if you have any. Uh, remove any extra dead weight, like the panels on the door, only only leaving the handles to open the doors, and that's what I like about this. And I know that firsthand because I actually owned a Sylvia S13 uh, years ago, and I actually stripped down my doors, and this is actually just a nice little touch for me at least next thing you know or next thing you do is you flip out the legs G1 style bring them all the way down fold them out like so so it's quite a simple transformation really this part is actually quite interesting quite cool um, you wanna take these feet flip them down get the clearance of these panels here because they do tend to knock against each other flip the feet up and then flip the feet down and have them just kind of pressure against there They're, they don't lock in there secure uh, they don't lock in there at all but just the way that the feet form it's very secure you do the same thing here 
and then you have the legs already when we pan up. These panels here actually do become side skirts, so you want to just you want to just flip out the sword handles and then flip in the clear blue plastic for windshields, and then you have a side skirt. So it's actually very resemblant to Masterpiece Starscream or Alternative Starscream, if you have that figure. Very, very resemblant to it. Next thing you do, take these two pieces, split them in half. I think uh, you need to untab them up here first. There you go, split them in half. You see Drift's head. You take these two, you take these panels here and they fold on top of the side fenders. Like so. And then you can also leave the arms this way, kind of like uh, kind of like blur. Or you can just do it the proper way, flip them back that way, and then you untuck the arms from there. Quite simple enough. And there you have well let's take this piece here and you do get some nice detail there so if you if you're into highlighting details on your figure this is a very good place to do that you just take this there's a tab right there and the little gap in the, in the cavity of the chest and it tabs in there not the very best secure tab but that's how it goes and for the most part that's generations drift if it's one thing I like about this deluxe class figure it's just the added details that they've applied to like on the paint apps, you get two Autobot symbols on the shoulders, and you do get these nice highlighted pieces here as well on the shoulders. And like I said, in there, it's it allows you for an opportunity to highlight those details as well. I am actually going to do that later on, but it's real. It's actually real nice. Once again, the little details here under the door panels is a nice little uh, nod nod to those who are actually into uh, the the drifting thing. Um, so you do get some small paint amps here and there, some nice gold here, uh, red trim, red trim there. These are actually added on there, I don't believe the drift, the original drift concept had those red panels, but I'm glad that they, I'm glad Hasbro actually decided to add it on there to kind of accent the legs, otherwise it will be entirely white. Now like I said with the tires they are this dark gray plastic along with everything else like joints and body parts and stuff. I was really hoping it would be a darker, darker gray, more, more close to black, uh, to be a little bit more, I guess, parts accurate. Because honestly, tires aren't this gray; they're a lot darker than that. But you know, can't complain. It's only a ten-dollar figure, at least for me it was. Uh, but anyway, really nice light piping. There's the light piping there, and then you do get the light piping through the eyes. It actually works pretty well. And everything else looks real nice. From the front, it looks awesome. From the side, can't say it does too much. You got a whole bunch of kibble. And then from the back, it just looks like a whole bunch of car parts as well. Kind of like an alternative star screen. But if you actually do look at the illustrations from the comics, you do realize that uh, Drift does have these panels here. He does have the protruding shoulder pads. And his legs are actually really chunky like that. And to be honest, I think... Um, as a deluxe class figure, Hasbro really hit it spot on. If the figure was probably a Voyager class or a Human Alliance class, and they did a drift, I think that would have been really, really awesome and a lot more accurate. A lot less kibble here in the legs. Uh, although the legs are chunky, they are supposed to retain the G1 or Classics um, aesthetic design, and I really think that this figure pulls it off very well. So if you're a fan of the Classics figures, a fan fan of the universe figures, then this is definitely a figure you should try and check out. As you saw earlier, he does come with one huge katana, and it is made of this soft rubbery plastic, and there is actually an ongoing issue with this sword, although I found uh, a counter to that. Uh, it isn't really a fix, but more of a way to prevent the sword from warping, as you can see the handle is a little warped. And I did notice when I was posing my drift in a so sort of normal stance and he had the katana and just holding it down like that the next day I checked the sword was bent down like this and I realized it's only because of that due to gravity so if you keep the sword held up straight or held down straight if you kept it like this then it's definitely gonna flop down but if you kept it up this way even if it was slightly angled or turned in any way then the problem is least likely to happen but you know that should have happened in the first place I would prefer that this to be a harder plastic, but for safety issues, I understand why they went with this route. 
and his other two accessories are his smaller swords which are kept within his side skirts very well and it's really nice because under those uh, uh, I guess panels you can see the sword the blade of the sword just kind of sliding through there so that's a really nice little added touch of detail not sure if it was intentional but you yeah, know it's a really nice added touch the these handles do move because of the transformation and it's a very nice silver shiny silver paint app also made of the same plastic as the main katana but least likely to uh, run across the flopping because it's a lot shorter but anyway you do get two of these one in each side skirt before I go over articulation keep in mind that Drift's design is actually a lot clunky but it's actually surprisingly very good now you do have two hinges on the head so you have a hinge where the head where the neck is attached into the head that will allow the head to look up about that far which is actually really impressive a lot of Transformers figures can't really do that and you also have a hinge at the neck at the base of the body that will allow you to turn his head side to side but limited to these collar pieces you also have a hinged ball jointed shoulder which will allow for a good range of movement especially because of these huge um, shoulder pieces they do tend to get in the way so you can get a full range of ball joint movement along with an extra sort of extra hinge for the transformation you also get a rotation or a hinge at the shoulder itself rotation below the shoulder two point of bend double jointed hinge at the elbow because of transformation once again and you also get a ball jointed wrist and that's mostly because of transformation as well but that does help for certain poses especially when you want to hold the katana in two hands which is very possible now there is no waist articulation although I do see I, I don't see why there isn't any I don't think it would have hurt the figure at all that would have been really awesome if it did have a waist articulation but it doesn't uh, you do get these hinged ball joints as well for the side skirts so you can move, maneuver them in and out of the way for different poses ball jointed uh, hips that allow a good range of movement for the legs swivel at the thigh hinge at the knee and that's pretty much it for the feet I guess if you want to consider that articulation but it does open up this cavity so I guess that really doesn't count but very basic articulation especially for the legs but if you'll see in a second you'll if you check out in a second you'll see why it doesn't really matter although there are plenty of posability hindrances like the huge shoulder pads the side skirts and just the clunky legs and no foot articulation you can still get a nice solid wide-legged stance and that's due to the different points of balance in the different legs. Now although these don't look like they work, they actually do. It doesn't really give off a good effect because the legs or the feet rather aren't really touching the ground and you're really just using these side panels as support. The overall effect is still great. You can still get these nice looking dual machete epic poses for drift. And if that demonstration wasn't enough to show you that he does have a good point of balance, well look at this. And thanks to the combined points of articulation all over the upper body, mainly the arms, you can get Drift to hold his sword or his katana in both hands and still look like a true samurai. I think with the overall bulkiness, this really does work and it really gives off that G1 classics or universe uh, design aesthetics and really makes it look good. And that about does it for my review for Generations of Less Class Drift. I highly recommend this figure. Uh, if you haven't picked it up, go ahead and do so. It's a very nice, um, I guess, nod to those who are fans of the classics or uh, the, the universe of the classics G1 look, especially the action figures. Um, and you're not really a fan of the newer molds, but you're definitely more of a fan of the classics and uh, universe. This is a great figure, especially for, for uh, fans of that series, as, as you can completely see with the aesthetic of the chunky yet G1 looking aesthetics. It's a very nice motive. Plus, come on, Drift? Well, I don't know about the alt mode, but Drift? Samurai motive? Badass-looking robot? What more do you want? This figure is highly recommended. I can't really think of anything bad to say about the figure except for that if you aren't a fan of the clunky design, then maybe this isn't the figure for you. Or if you find that the issues with the katana is something that'll scare you away from the figure, then that's fine as well. But I do highly recommend you pick this figure up. Give it a chance if you weren't considering picking it up because of the certain issues that it had. Just give it a chance, and uh, I'm pretty sure you'll find some way to enjoy this figure because I enjoy this 100%. Aside from that sword issue, with this one at least, aside from that, I really cannot find any way to... Uh, I really cannot find any uh, major cons against the figure. Uh, for me at least, but for any general consumer, 
it would definitely have to be the issue with the sword and the issue that it just looks a little too bulky and that's a lot of uh, it's a lot of kibble but if you think about it and you really look at the design the original concept of drift it, like I said earlier in the review I think this is actually spot on and I have to give Hasbro some kudos for actually pulling off a deluxe class figure of uh, of a character that originally wasn't intended to be uh, an action figure though Hasbro figured hey let's give it a try I'm glad they did because uh, it gave me a really gave me a really satisfying figure and um, I know my opinion is slightly biased because I, I am into the whole drift scene I love import cars and you know what's what's to go wrong with the samurai motive but really it, it's an overall great figure and I highly recommend it I cannot say that enough so that's my review. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it useful. And for any of those who are curious, I hope this helped you out in some way. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys later.